coming up on CTV News. CSU's powerhouse is up and running. And Earth Week is almost over, a recap of how CSU celebrated. And students make an effort to fight childhood cancer. Stay tuned for more on CTV News. CSU's new Powerhouse Energy Campus is officially up and running, and it's excited to save lots of energy and money. Hello and welcome to CTV News. I'm Bryn Carmen, And I'm Stephanie Walters. Thanks for joining us tonight. The Powerhouse Energy Campus is set to achieve 50 to 55 percent of CSU's energy savings. Colorado State University was there for the opening of the building. Let's take a look. Welcome to our flagship facility, the Powerhouse Energy Campus. We've added 65,000 square feet, so we now have a dedicated energy facility of 100,000 square feet, one of the largest dedicated energy uh, facilities at any university in the United States. All the different people who are in this building and who are really associated with CSU are working on these issues every day because of our collaborative nature and because of our willingness to work together have the ability to actually do more together and to add value to each other's work. Innovation and change are accelerated when we have the science people bumping into the policy people and the health people and the behavioral people on a daily basis. This facility is going to uh, kick those, those collaborations to the next level. And we're delighted to be able to provide that to, to our faculty, to our students, and to the community. I couldn't be more proud to be up here and take credit for Governor Ritter's hard work uh, and his vision uh, for this facility. Congratulations on having such a great campus in the powerhouse. Pat Stryker and the Bohemian Foundation were an early believer in what we did uh, when we launched EnviroFit to develop energy solutions to the developing world. And again, uh, we're, the, we're the first visionaries to step in for funding for this facility. Uh, Pat and the Bohemian Foundation are the major funder, uh, major funder for this facility. With that, I would just like to announce that the Powerhouse Energy Campus is now open for impact. Thanks to CSU Video for the coverage. The building is located off of North College Avenue. It took 18 months to renovate the old energy building, which had been in place since 1936. CSU is being recognized for its unique tree garden. To celebrate this recognition as well as Arbor Day, CSU is holding a tree planting event. It's tomorrow at 9.30 in the morning in Flower Garden, at the Flower Garden in front of the University Center of the Arts. Volunteers are coming to welcome and help plant different kinds of tree species. The main campus already has more than 4,500 different species of trees. This recognition comes from Arbor Day Foundation and Toyota Mortar North America. As a green campus, CSU has extended the found recognition of Earth Day into a week-long event. Various events have encouraged alternate means of transportation and other sustainability tips. Free food! We love cyclists! Wednesday morning on the corner of University and Meridian, ASCSU and University Transportation Services celebrated Earth Week by providing free breakfast to students who biked to campus. We've got 300 breakfast burritos and we're going to thank all of our uh, campus bicyclists for, uh, for riding their bike. Bicyclists who stopped at the table could give any suggestions for bike paths in Fort Collins by writing a comment on a sticky note and placing it anywhere on the map. Uh, we are updating the master plan to go into the campus master plan and this is our blueprint for how we spend um, our campus resources on bike improvements like bike parking, um, underpasses, overpasses, fixing potholes, new bike lanes, new bike trails, uh, so on and so forth. Another booth was set up for students to pump up their tires and get any other bike repairs taken care of for free. Obviously the bike population is just going to keep growing and I don't know, I just think it's a really good. This is awesome. I'm just really psyched to be here. Despite the early hours, students were excited to bike to breakfast and participate in the event. Now that the weather is warming up, it's easier to bike to campus. Just remember to be safe, wear a helmet, and walk your bike in all of the dismount zones. 
This afternoon, the engineering department kicked off E-Days with a barbecue. Students not only were able to enjoy free food, but they were given the opportunity to challenge their friends in a round of jousting. Tomorrow, E-Days will showcase student projects and demonstrate designs from all engineering backgrounds. The event will be held in Moby from 9 to 3. The Food and Drug Administration has officially placed rules and restrictions on electronic cigarettes and cigars. E-cigarettes have gained popularity over the last few years, and the FDA has proposed rules that will ban manufacturers to selling to minors. And products must include a warning label that lists all ingredients. A spin-off of AirBnB, or Air Bed and Breakfast, is looking to hit the market in May. It's called Air THC. It's a vacation rental company that allows people to rent out their homes or a bedroom in their home to vacationers who are coming to the state to legally enjoy cannabis. Jackie Wilson is here in the Weather Center. Jackie, it was gorgeous today. It's definitely starting to look and feel more like summer. Absolutely, guys. It was gorgeous today, and we definitely saw those spring temperatures all across the state. If you look at today's highs, you can see that today in Fort Collins, we sat up in the 60s. It was beautiful, and right now outside the studio, we're sitting at about 58 degrees, with our wind speed coming from the southwest at about 8 miles an hour. And this whole weekend is looking nice as well. Maybe a little bit windy, but I'll have more about that later. Back to you, Seth. That sounds great. Thanks, Jackie. A new research lab on campus is open and crabs are crawling all over. See what students are learning. And one fraternity puts its efforts towards helping childhood cancer. You won't want to miss it. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Rams. I'm weather anchor Jackie Wilson here again for your Thursday night weather report. How great has that sunshine been? It's really beginning to feel like spring, and the temperatures are giving us that slight taste of summer. We saw wonderful highs today, but it is going to be a bit chillier tonight, so let's take a look at tonight's lows. Tonight in Fort Collins, we're seeing about 40 degrees, 44 here in Denver, and as we move southward, it's going to be about 36. 25 here in Alamosa, and over on the eastern plains, we're seeing 30 in Lyman and 39 in Burlington. Tomorrow, however, we are in store for another gorgeous day. Tomorrow we're going to be at 76 here in Fort Collins, and 70s pretty much all along the I-25 corridor until we get to the southern part in Pueblo here at 81. Up in the mountains, of course, it's going to be a bit chillier, so 58 here in Vail and 63 in Gunnison. And over on the eastern portion of the state, we're seeing 76 in Lyman, 84 at our high point in Lamar. We are in store for a bit of a cool down, unfortunately, later this week, and those winds never really seem to help, so let me show you our five-day forecast. Friday, like I said, is going to be 76, but it will be pretty windy, so expect a little bit of a cool down and maybe a windbreaker or some sort of jacket to keep you a little warmer. 20% chance of precipitation here on Saturday. And as we move through the weekend, Sunday here is going to be mostly cloudy skies. Moving along through the week, we're going to be seeing that same kind of cloud coverage on Monday with our windy, windy uh, temperatures again, and 56 both on Monday and Tuesday, with uh, the sun creeping through hopefully a little bit. Still expect to see a lot of wind pretty much throughout the week. That's all the weather I've got for you, Rams. Back to you, Bryn. Thanks, Jackie. A new research lab on campus is helping students to get research experience as undergrads. CTV reporter Kate Winkle got an inside look. There's a hotel in the depths of the basement of Colorado State University's Anatomy and Zoology building, but it's not like any you've ever seen. Plastic containers are the rooms, the tenants, crabs. This lab is unique, not only researching the colorful crustaceans, but it's one of the labs that takes on the most CSU undergraduates and trains them to do research. Most undergrads start out like Matt Donovan did. Crab care is not very much fun. Um, and it's actual manual work, but you get to understand um, kind of the lowest level of the lab and what we do. Once they've learned how to care for crabs, it's time to take things up a notch. Now most undergraduate students start downstairs in the basement caring for the crabs. But then, after they've been here a couple of months, we'll get to come upstairs and start their own research project in the lab. Thank you. From the crustacean decorations to the benches filled with lab equipment, the lab's primary investigator, Dr. Donald Michaels, has eight to ten undergraduates in his lab per semester. They add a, a spark of dimension that uh, keeps things fun and interesting. One of the major um, rewards, I think, of being a professor is the opportunity to be able to train students. It also gives them an, an idea of what research is really like. 
Oftentimes we present research in laboratory classes as more of a cookbook kind of thing. They can see what they're learning in the classroom really applies to what they're doing in the laboratory. I think that provides additional motivation for them to succeed. The hands-on approach helps students learn and teach. Like other graduate students and postdoctoral students, Megan Mudrin mentors undergraduates in the lab. And when those students finish their own projects, it's kind of like a proud mama moment. The researchers' collaboration turned into a camaraderie. It is like a family. Starting from the bottom and working their way to the top. Kate Winkle, CTV News. Most undergrads don't get the chance to do research, but many professors say it is an important part of the college experience. Patrick Enslow has all the latest RAM sports updates, and we'll get a score update for the Avs game. And one organization on campus is doing its part in the fight against childhood cancer. You won't want to miss it. Things are heating up for CSU softball with the first place Rams finishing off their series victory last night against New Mexico, winning 13-5. This game ended early as CSU recorded five runs in the fifth inning to end the game in a mercy rule. The Rams have won 14 of their last 16 games. CSU will head to San Diego tomorrow to face the Aztecs in a critical three-game series. The Rams look to keep atop the Mountain West as first place means an automatic NCAA tournament bid. In NHL news, the Avs lost key defenseman Tyson Berry for four weeks after a questionable hit from Minnesota Wild's Matt Cook. The NHL did hand down a seven-game suspension to Cook after the hit. The Avs are currently in action in Minnesota with a score of 1-0 Minnesota. That's all I have for sports for you tonight. Be sure to check out CTV Sports on Monday for a season recap. Back to you, Bryn. In an effort to join the battle against childhood cancer, the Fort Collins branch of Northwestern Mutual and a special guest cancer survivor hosted an Alex's Lemonade Stand. This is so exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation is a pediatric cancer research organization on a mission to find a cure. Yesterday on campus, Northwestern Mutual partnered with Delta Sig Fraternity to support this cause and assist in their efforts. It's been really fun. I like it a lot. The kids are really generous, actually, for like being poor college students. We had a girl donate $50 which is a lot for a college student. I was really impressed. Just two hours into the lemonade stand, they had already raised over $500, just in time to welcome Daichi, a local Fort Collins boy battling cancer. Daichi is a six-year-old boy with leukemia. He was diagnosed years ago and is now in remission. In the United States, childhood cancer is the leading cause of death by disease in children under the age of 15. Every day, approximately 250 kids, just like Dachi, around the world die from cancer, accounting for 91,250 losing their lives to this disease every year. I don't, I mean, just probably hearing his story or just getting to meet him and just realizing, like, some kids have it a lot harder than healthy kids, you know. So. Mix, pour, and find a cure. Make a difference for all kids with cancer by hosting an Alex's Lemonade Stand. Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation began in 2000 by a little girl's wish to hold lemonade stands to raise money to find a cure for childhood cancer. The foundation bearing her name Alex has raised more than $65 million. Thanks for tuning in to CTV tonight. Remember to tune in next week for our last episodes of the semester. Have a great weekend, Rams.